All right, I'm Chris Savina with American Outdoor News, and uh, today we have a, uh, a repeat guest, Paul Hutchinson. We spoke uh, uh, a little while back about your work that you've done with child trafficking, working with the government, breaking up child trafficking rings, and so important what you do. Um, but we didn't cover last time, but we ran out of time, was um, things to look for. I mean, what um, what is the profile of some of these people that uh, you've encountered? Well, Chris, that's the that's the scary part. Um, most of these traffickers and pedophiles that we've taken down, uh, you wouldn't notice that they're any different than the guy next door in a lot of cases, you know, people think, oh yeah, let's be careful of guys who have, you know, big beards and dark glasses and wearing this. No, these are, these are, these are guys that try to blend in. Um, it's, uh, uh, and I can't tell you how many times where we've, we've, we've taken down a bust and the, the traffickers look like any other guy on the street. <clears throat> and so what you need to be looking for though, is more, of the behavior of your kids because when they make themselves out as a victim, then they're a, a bigger target. So teaching healthy self-esteem in your children is one of the most important things you can do. Um, teach them to, to, to look people in the eyes and not walk around you know, on their cell phones looking down all the time and hunched over and, and acting like a victim. Put them in some self-defense classes so that they're confident in their ability to, to deal with an issue if that ever happens. That's super important. Um, it's also important to teach your children that indeed there are hundreds of thousands of, of predators online right now looking through social media things of, of the kids and looking for potential opportunities and victims. I'll, I'll tell you an example. Um, years ago, we had a, a rescue that was in, uh, in a beach town in, uh, in Latin America. And we had scheduled this over um, New Year's because there was a lot that the federal agents said there was a lot of trafficking going on around the, around the holidays, around New Year's in this area. Uh, because a lot of wealthy Americans would come down for parties and whatever. And so we went in undercover for a few weeks to identify where the traffickers were so that we could set up the sting um, uh, over, over the New Year's weekend. And I was dating a girl at the time, and she wanted to be with me over the holidays. I'm like, no, I'm doing this work. I'm doing this work. I'm, I'm traveling. She goes, just let me, let me come and, you know, uh, can I just stay at a resort that's close to where you are so we can, you know, be, so I said, okay. So we flew her down. She was staying at a resort away from, from where we were. She had her uh, cousin with her. Um, now her cousin had just turned 18, but her cousin looked like she was, you know, like 14. She looked a lot younger. Okay. And, um, and, she was down there advertising on her social media. Hey, we're down here in Col in this this uh, uh, this beach town area. We're you know just having a fun time. Well, she comes to me and she shows me her phone and she said, "Paul, this is look at this guy. He wants he's a guide and he saw me posting that we were down here and he wants to take us take me and." Um, your girlfriend on a, a free boat ride um, yeah. he can tour around on the the uh, islands and stuff around here and he has jet skis and stuff and he wants to just take us for free this looks fun and she showed me his picture Chris this was one of the traffickers this wow. is one of the guys that was selling his children as young as seven years old and he was he was reaching out to tourists that were down there that in his mind looked like they were down there without parents uh -huh. and reaching out to them because i guess on social media streams you can you can identify people who are in the area who are just posting and saying okay you know look for this and so he was he was profiling people that that looked like they were um they were there without parents 
to see if he could bring them into his network. This is how he was bringing in some of these children. So, you know, super important to be extra vigilant about what the children are posting online and, um, um, and what kind of, of information is out there to the, to the public because you don't know. You don't know what that, these guys are looking for. That brings us into a whole different category. I've traveled all over the world with my son uh, as an infant through, you know, now, you know, he's an adult. You know, we travel. Uh, what precautions can a parent take taking their children overseas to the islands, going to Europe or, or wherever they're taking them? What, you know, how can they save yeah. them being with their child on a I, I'll, I'll tell you. vacation? <laughs> so to, to, put, to put people's minds at ease, the percentage of children and victims that we rescue that were abducted from affluent families when they are traveling or even at their homes is very low. The uh, yeah. it's now it doesn't mean that there's still not a big problem. The the uh, the majority of children that are trafficked are taken from broken homes, are taken from from the foster system, from runaways. It um, a runaway child is brought into to that world within days of of running away because they are the highest profile. They're they're ones that nobody cares about. You're not going to have. Uh, well, a, a family that's putting massive resources into looking for a child if, if they're coming from a, a, a super broken home or from a, um, a situation where they're in 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 uh, in a state run home, um, you know, whatever. And so there's those are the ones who are the highest, highest victims. Or unfortunately, in a lot of these third world countries, uh, they're very, very poor families. In, in Southeast Asia and Thailand, more than half the children we rescued in Thailand were, were sold by their own families. And so there's, there's challenges like that from a poverty standpoint where yeah. you've got to deal with. The number one problem, and this is super important, you have, you have a thousand times higher chance of your child being a victim of abuse, of sexual abuse in your own home, in your own neighborhood than you ever will having them abducted and taken. Now, the parents thinking, oh, well, the worst thing ever is if my child is actually physically taken from me and sold. Well, yes, that is. That's, that's a horrible thing. But you have to understand that worldwide right now, there are approximately 8 million children who are being sold in trafficking physically owned children that are that are sold by these traffickers. Eight million sounds like a big number. However, there's over one billion women on this planet who were who had ex, who were a victim of sexual violence as a child. In fact, there's over 200 million men who experienced sexual violence under the age of 10 years old and most of them in their own homes. And so this is where the biggest problem is. In fact, this is the reason why I've decided to go public is because I've realized that just going undercover and rescuing 20 children at a time was never going to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. Because there, if we didn't do anything to fix the demand, then it would just create another vacuum. And so by by teaching people how to keep their children safe in their own homes, or by helping adolescents and young adults who had experienced that kind of trauma as a child. And if we can help them heal before they pass on that trauma in any form, we'll save millions of children. Because some of them grow up with low self-esteem and, and, and you know issues with themselves. Others grow up and the they 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 pass on they pass on that trauma with either either sexual abuse or physical abuse or even just verbal abuse is still passing on that to that next generation and so the number one thing that you can do as a parent 
is to build that self-esteem in your child, not only so they don't get abducted, but so that they can they can be strong against Uncle Harry or whoever is going to be babysitting them so they can know who they are and be super careful what kind of people are alone with your children ever because that's where that abuse happens and that's going to affect their entire life. Yeah. Wow. And and that's, you know, that's um, a staggering number. So. Yeah, those numbers uh, are really staggering that it could be just about anybody. Could be your neighbor, your soccer coach, a, a family member, uh, which I, I think is more prevalent than abduction, uh, uh, according to. Yes, what you're I can't I, you're frozen. Yeah, yeah, it really could be. Yeah, it's not. It's not just. It's not just the guy that's working at the strip club in in Colombia. You know, this could be a next door neighbor. This could be. I understand that that. Um, that about one in every four households in the world have situations in their own homes where children have been abused. And so it's a, it's a scarier world out there than just having your child taken in, in a third world country because it's, it's affecting their entire life when uh, that, that kind of travesty is allowed to happen. And so uh, building your children's self-esteem, helping them be super careful of what, about what they're posting online and, um, and helping them respect their body and others as well and, and, and understand what healthy, what barriers are, what boundaries are, what, what is not okay to cross. Have those conversations with your children when they're young so that they can feel comfortable coming to you and saying, hey, this guy makes me feel uncomfortable. This is what happened. And uh, so that that's what's going to keep them safe. And um, there's a lot of children that get groomed uh, in their own neighborhoods by people who would try to get them to to uh, to be involved. We we did a rescue once. This this little girl, she was uh, she was uh, 12 years old, just turned 13, actually. Um, She was being her babysitter was her aunt and her aunt uh was friends with some of these traffickers and uh her aunt started showing this little girl pornography when she was babysitting her and to desensitize her and then she told this little girl she told her hey you know you're gonna lose your virginity sometime anyway um if you lose it to these these rich americans then you can earn five hundred dollars well she was charging us five thousand dollars for this poor little girl in um in this sting operation and uh, the mother had no idea what was going on it was it was the aunt that was babysitting this little girl that was desensitizing her with with pornography and working with the traffickers so this kind of thing happens a lot we had another little girl who was an american she um she was uh, she her and her sister were being raised by the grandmother and uh the grandmother was a loving lady but not very attentive and and uh, they, this little 13-year-old and her sister, who was 17, told the grandma, hey, we're going to go, uh, we're going to go travel internationally. We're going to go travel together. And so they, they uh, during the summer, so they left for about a month. Grandma said, okay, be safe, have fun. Well, these, these two little girls ran out of money and they didn't want to call their grandma and tell her that they were out of money. And so the older, the 17-year-old uh, had found this guy who was grooming her. He was a trafficker, but made her think that he could really be her boyfriend or whatever. And so she started um, doing some parties and stuff with them. And then her little 13-year-old sister, the traffickers um, were, took her and drugged her and, and, uh, and were, were trafficking this little girl. So, you know, this is the kind of situations the grandma just thought they were out on vacation and was just extending longer. And so it's, um, uh, there are predators everywhere and uh, those predators could be in third world countries they could be your next door neighbor they could be your brother or brother-in-law you know there there's a lot of predators that you just need to be uh, aware that um that especially if your next door neighbor or your brother-in-law has had some kind of 
trauma themselves that has been unresolved as children. Uh, sometimes that trauma comes out in in healthy ways where they're like, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some great things in the world and prove to the world that that's not me and whatever. Other times it comes out in in unhealthy ways where they uh, their perception of intimacy is really skewed and they end up um, passing on that trauma and verbal, physical, or even sexual abuse to other children. So those are those are what we're, our goal is is to help people heal before uh, before it gets passed on in any form. Well, what kind of uh child behavior should a parent look for if they suspect something is going on? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So um, any kind of changes to your child's self-esteem should be, should be looked at very carefully. You know, too many parents think Oh, my, my child's self-esteem is, is down because they're being bullied at school. No, maybe they're being bullied at school because their self-esteem is down because there's some abuse situations that are happening. In, uh, and, and that's more common than not. So um, if your child is dealing with some, some self-esteem issues and they're they're not getting along well with others at school um they're they're having a hard time with their homework um they're they're having extra nightmares they are um they're becoming socially distant uh not only at school but in in situations in your own family those are signs to be looking for and 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 needs immediate intervention in making sure that you as the parent are are spending time with that child, uh, building their self esteem, building your relationship with them, so that they feel comfortable in coming to you with any kind of issues. If if that relationship isn't there, they're very isolated, and they're probably being told by the the predator that they will harm their family or um um. Uh, or they will be harmed themselves, and so there's fear there. So if there's a there's an undue amount of fear that your child is having about things that doesn't make sense to you, why why are they scared of of this? Why are they scared of talking to people? Why are they scared? Whatever it is, if there's extra fear, that fear is being uh, probably being propagated by by a predator who is manipulating them with fear. Um, to to hurt them and, and take advantage of them. So those are all signs to be watching for with the children, low self-esteem, changes in their behavior and their social interactions and and fear that's coming out from any any kind of direction are signs that there may be some underlying issues that need to be dealt with. And so spend that time with your child, build that relationship with them, build their self-esteem and figure out really what's going on. Well, I know in the U.S., uh, roughly 2,300 children are abducted uh, per day. Uh, the number of children that are sexually abused has to be astronomical. Oh, it's, yeah, absolutely. Here, here's the thing. 40% of all the women you know in America have been a victim of sexual violence. 40%, almost half. 40% of all women in the US. And the average age of somebody who comes out and says, this is what happened to me as a child, the average age is 52 years old. So they're holding this inside of them, their entire life. They're, they're, they're raising their children and working their jobs holding this trauma inside of themselves. Now, the, the, the number with men is a little bit lower, but it's still one in five. 20% of all that's, men that's still have high. been a victim of sexual violence. That's still super high. Absolutely. And so, you know, you, you look at those kind of numbers, you realize this is an epidemic. And this is, this is why I'm focusing on this kind of healing because – when I started looking into the cause, the demand of child trafficking, 
I came to an understanding that that I I thought that a long time that it was just uh, addiction to pornography that was leading to it. Where you know when you when you take a woman from a divine feminine to an object and you start going down a dark road, and sometimes these guys who are addicted want something harder to have that same fix, and for some of them harder is a little bit younger, a little bit younger. Pretty soon they're fantasizing about things they wouldn't have even thought was attractive five years ago. I thought that was a demand. That's what we have to fix is this this pornography thing. And I've realized that no, that's a symptom as well, right? Just like the the trafficking is a symptom, the, 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 the pornography is a symptom of a deeper underlying issue. And that deeper underlying issue are, are, are people who have had some, some, some type of trauma in their life that is causing that behavior. And, and so if we can get down to that root cause, and it's not just people who are sexually abused. I mean, there are people who never had an angry word in their home. They were never physically abused. They were never sexually abused, but they ended up with their own type of trauma in their houses as well. Maybe their father never said, I love you. Maybe he never gave them a hug. Maybe they, they, maybe they had an absentee mother or father in their home, whatever. They were dealing with some emotional issues that they held and felt guilty for, even though it wasn't their fault. And, and being able to help them let go of that judgment, let go of that guilt and, and recover and heal, that's, that's what it's going to take to help literally transform a generation so that we're not creating generational abuse and creating this demand for the, the, the trafficking world that we've been fighting. So there's always some kind of root cause cause of the abuse yeah <laughs> that's the, the that's the root of it is is that hurt people will hurt other people healed people will help heal people and that's that's really what it's all about is is creating that healing and so you know a lot of my focus right now we have we have the, the Child Liberation Foundation has been um, helping to eradicate child trafficking for, for many years. And the majority of the money of that foundation would go to rescue efforts and rehabilitation and safe houses, things like that. Our new focus with that foundation is to not just help fund the rescue of trafficked children, but to help rescue the 10 year old child inside of a 30, 40 year old man or woman who's been dealing with some of that issue for the majority of their life. And so not only are we helping to build safe houses, we are helping to create healing retreats for adults who want to shed some of the childhood trauma that they're dealing with. And they'll come in for a two or three or four day intensive um, healing opportunity where we'll use everything from from animals with equine therapy to um, to uh, drum healing and 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 breath work and deep meditation even uh, uh, in some of the ones that we're doing in Jamaica and Mexico and others uh, using um, different types of of plants of plant medicine to help release that trauma and get through that in a way where we can we can we can create real long term change within a period of a few days uh, of of intensive trauma therapy. So that's what we're working with, and that's what I'm putting a lot of my focus and time into is is these healing retreats and these healing opportunities where we'll bring in adults who want to overcome some challenges of their childhood and help them within uh, 24 to 48 hours have more breakthroughs than what they've seen with traditional therapy in 10 plus years. So that's treating um, depression, anxiety, and everything else that comes along with it. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, we, we specialize in PTSD for 
uh, especially for operators. You know, our our special forces guys or Green Berets, Navy SEALs that we've worked with on a lot of our missions. So um, having having PTSD focus, helping people with anxiety and depression, even if that anxiety and depression didn't come from their childhood, helping them work through that, helping people with anger issues, um, helping people uh, learn how to love themselves, especially if they dealt with some kind of childhood trauma. There's there's a lot of lack of self-love that people deal with year after year after year. And so being able to, to help them redefine themselves and not define themselves by the trauma of their past or the things that happened to them or even the things that they did, you know, help them let that past be in the past, focus on the present and on, on where they're going, shed that trauma, let go of guilt, let go of judgment, let go of pain, let go of anger, let go of fear and, and step into this new light of healing. That's, that's what our primary focus is now in putting together, and we do them almost every other weekend, uh, where we'll pull together uh, adults who 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 want to have a, a healing experience. Um, some of them, you know, I, I took a bunch of uh, of religious leaders and doctors to Jamaica in January uh, to give them their first experience with uh, using some plant medicine tools, some psychedelic type tools to, to, to work through their issues. And it was beautiful and transformational. We had to take them there because a lot of those things aren't legal in, in, uh, in areas of the U S yet, but we're working on those. Um, but we have other ones that are here um, in, uh, in the U S where we, we have people with these intensive, you know, breath work trainings and sound bowl and, working with the horses and stuff like that, where we help people uh, transform their lives in, in, uh, in two to three days, coming away with a truly transformational experience. That's because if I can help the adults heal from their trauma, their crap, whatever it is, then we can in turn, they can turn around and be much better parents in showing up for their children and, and, and living from a place of the heart, leading from a place of the heart and, and being more sensitive to the needs of their kids so that we don't have generational trauma that is passed on. Sure. Sure. Well, uh, it's, <laughs> we really appreciate all the work that you do. Uh, because it's it's so important, especially in today's day and age, uh, where something like this is more and more prevalent. Um, I want to thank you for that. And um, where can we? Uh, where can people find you? Uh, well, I, I guess we lost our connection here, but um, uh, I'll have the um, contact information for. Uh, Paul in the closing credits. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us at American Outdoor News. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you again. We love our children. We protect them. We guide them. We prepare them for life in the world. With all that we do, from deep in our hearts, we cannot control all things. Life-threatening illnesses and disabilities affect far too many of our children each year. While we cannot change the circumstance, we can make dreams come true. Dreams to provide hope, to provide spiritual healing and strength, to provide moments of happiness and relief in the hardest of times. We can give a glimmer of light and hope in a time of darkness and despair. Join huntofalifetime.org to help make dreams come true, to provide hope for children with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Hunt of a Lifetime is a nonprofit organization fulfilling dreams for hunting and fishing trips to youth 21 and under with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Visit huntofalifetime.org to learn how you can make a difference.